in the human intrusion we will be talking about the emergence of humans but first we will be discussing what does it mean by the human intrusion before the humans appeared on the stage of the globe the earth the all the organisms the flora and fauna they were living in a relatively harmony and the weather patterns were changing the organism were uh, uh, evolving on their own the plants were uh, evolving the, an uh, the animals were evolving all the organism were evolving but the entry of the humans to this stage has changed the earth forever and that's what we will be discussing in the human intrusion and first we will be discussing about the emergence of humans that how human came into the being so the pleistocene was a time of climatic instability which had the a considerable impact on the distribution patterns of the organism over the face of earth so pleistocene was the first epoch of the quaternary period and it was a time of extinctions but also one of the diversification of some type of organisms so this was the time at which the dinosaurs were leaving the stage and the mammals were diversifying they were coming into more and more complex they were occupying more and more niches and, and their biodiversity was increasing as well so there has been uh, uh, much debate concerning whether the speciation became faster or slower during the quaternary ice age and the uh, general conclusion is that the extinction rate within the pleistocene exceeded the speciation rate so there was more uh, extinction rather than the speciation so for mammals it was a time of extensive evolution there was more and more evolution in terms of that they were changing they were making more and more species and uh, due to the uh, different niches which were left empty by the extinction of earlier animals uh, these mammals got a chance to diversify and occupy those niches and most living species of mammals evolved during the quaternary times live, uh, driven by the climatically unstable quaternary environment so here we have seen that there are the uh, climate change is also a factor here so when the climate is changing it is constantly giving a selection pressure to the uh, species uh, or the population so in a population when there is much more selection pressure there will be more uh, evolutionary processes and this will result into further diversification of those organisms so one of the species that evolved at this time was homo sapiens and homo sapiens as we know are the humans so human had has had a even greater impact on the biogeography of the earth than even the ice ages so ice age ages haven't changed the earth as much as the human has and it has therefore been suggested that period of the time should be known as anthropocene anthropocene means that anthro means the human right so anthropology the study of human behavior culture in the history as well so uh, the anthropocene it is the epoch of human this particular period in which we are living is defined by the human beings and human beings are responsible for any goods which are less and the bad to the environment that are present in our today's environment so the fossil history of humans is very incomplete but each year brings new material to light helping to find fill in the gaps and providing a more detailed picture of how anatomically modern humans emerge we have discussed that in the uh, paleontology part that how the different bones how the different fossils our discovery of lucy everything that makes a story that how uh, our human being they developed from the earlier ancestors which were less developed which were having uh, different traits in their not only their anatomy but also their their mental capacities how they were different and how the modern human developed from those we will be taking an geographical point of view of that development here so the primate of new words and old word became separated from each other some 40 million years ago and it is the old world branch that is ancestor to the humans when we talk about the old world and new world 
Uh, old world means the Africa, uh, Eurasia, Australia, and all the Eastern continents. And the new world is relatively new because it was discovered recently, uh, like in the 1600s. And this was about the North America and South America. So these are the new world. So the, the ape species which are living in the South and North America, these are the new world and they are not ancestors of our uh, human being, but the old world species are the ancestor of human beings. So the it these closely uh, the old world apes were closely related to the great apes which include the orangutan which is pongo and especially to the gorilla and the chimpanzee which is pan so the separation of the human ancestral branch the hominins from the great apes the two groups are known as hominids so the if we combine the hominins and great apes that becomes the hominids taken place about 7 million years ago and almost 99% of human genetic makeup is shared with the chimpanzee. So here you can see the relationship between the hominins and great uh, apes and it was taken from the Carroll and from McDowell. You can see that the Pongo, Pygmiasis, Gorilla, Gorilla, these are less uh, related to the uh, human and they are very uh, sharing very distant ancestor. The Gorilla, Gorilla is much more related uh, to the homo sapiens as compared to the pongo um, and then the uh, pan penismus and pan troglodytes these are the chimpanzees which are much more related as compared to the gorilla and then we have the whole homo domain or the genus where we have the different type of homo and most related of these are the homo neanderthalis right so which have lived uh, relatively in the closer past as we will be discussing in the further topics. So the hominin line uh, became more bipedal and developed a larger brain and greater manual dexterity. And while chimpanzees remained in the lower canopy of the forest and the ancestors of the humans took to the savanna woodlands and the grasslands. So manual uh, dexterity, that means they were using much more hands and even the feet in some cases. And the chimpanzees, they remained in their own niches. They didn't develop much. Their brain is the same, right? And they haven't developed as much as the ancestors of human and that related, that, that resulted into the uh, development of the modern human being, which is called Homo sapiens. 